<laughs> Hello everyone! Welcome back. Well, bing bong. Welcome back to the rationalinvestor.com's weekend frivolity. Hello everyone! Oh, bang. Hey, YouTube's all live and kicking. Hello, Omar. Uh, morning here from level one class. Oh, right on. Cool, Omar. Um, great to uh, see people uh, back on the site, uh, rocking and rolling the school program. Man, school program is off and running. I gotta say, and I, you know, I said it last week uh, and uh, through the week. Man, I'm damn impressed. <coughs> and also hearing a lot of really good feedback. Uh, we uh, actually had one of our site uh, OGs, uh, um, who's now finally taking the level three. Anyway, um, one of our site OGs who turns out he's a pretty darn good marketing uh, guy. Uh, sort of step up to the plate and really uh, fine tune what we've been doing here at uh, TRI. And he put together just the most beautiful uh, marketing pieces. And even the feedback that I'm getting, because I'm always leery to send out emails to people sort of, you know, who were old students or old site members saying, hey, you know, why don't you check this out? But the feedback I'm actually getting is even those are being delivered in a really solid manner. So thank you, David. Uh, thank you, Julian, for quarterbacking this. And of course, all uh, site members, new students, please understand uh, Julian is technically the support arm of our uh, of our site. Uh, and of course, he works intimately with Sjord. Um, and, um, you know, if there's anybody to be on this job, it's Julian, because he's absolutely perfectly suited for this. So you're all in good hands. Um, he does an incredible job at customer service, and he's incredibly polite and articulate and uh, patient. So, you know, if you are sort of in that queue, keep in mind, we just got an absolute swamp of new people on the site here. Uh, please, under, you know, and I've told him, hey, if I can help, uh, you know, by all means, uh, you know, let me know. Um, so, uh, you know, with the, with the swampage, uh, you know, things that we have been sort of working on and getting going and stuff, obviously everything's sort of like, whoa, <laughs> we got to deal with what's happening here in the short term. So, and of course, you know, that's a, a heartfelt thank you from myself. Because uh, what that really says to me is that I, I'm i actually, you know, bringing value. And we as a team at TRI are bringing value to um, the public. Um, and, um, and you believe in us and you trust in us. So, you know, thank you for that trust. That That's a huge uh, leap of faith that you're taking with us. And I appreciate it. Um, I um, I was able and you know privileged to sit in on the the introductory level one class and I think I've told you people in the public when I do these uh, Sunday shows um, if there are going to be questions to be answered and me interacting I would like for the level oneers coming out of their session with Grim if they have any sort of dovetail questions maybe questions that Grim even says you know what why don't we leave Brian to talk about that in the broiler chicken show uh, I would like this to be a dovetail and so we have a hell of a lot of people in the hangout here and I'm sure we're gonna have a whole bunch of people on the um, on the uh, lounge um, if uh, if you are a level oneer and uh, you do have questions, you know, really, I want I want that, uh, this to be a priority for you guys. I apologize, I'm moving my screens around here, and so stuff's moving around on YouTube, uh, but <laughs> my browser actually crashed just before, uh, before I was launching this. It was so funny. We literally, uh, we were playing, uh, I don't even know what the name of the song is. It's called uh, Darude, I don't know, uh, that da -da 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 song, right? And it was like building up, building up, and we're like, rock and roll! And then all of a sudden the browser crashes. And it was like we were either going to moon or we were going to crap out. And the browser crashed and I had to reboot my computer. <laughs> it was really funny. Quite uh, climactic, how ironic. Sure hope that isn't a harbinger of Bitcoin here, <laughs> but we'll get to the Bitcoin chart in a moment. Um, but, uh, you know, as I had said there a moment ago, you know, uh, welcome, uh, level oneers. Um, you are, you know, keep in mind, please, all level oneers that are watching this. I do see, of course, when you have such a big class, 
you are going to have some people that are like chomping at the bit. Hey, let's get going. Yeah, I already know trading plans. I just want to I want to learn these setups that you trade, blah, 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 blah. And then, there, of course, there are others that are just like, you know, I have no idea what I'm doing here. What how do I how do I start just from scratch? The level one program, of course, is primarily designed to get the people. I have no idea what I'm doing here. Just start from scratch kind of thing. So we're going to cover everything of the basics. Uh, this upcoming week for you level oneers is an incredibly steep learning curve. Uh, for those of you who already know that information, and I've even had a conversation with another gentleman, uh, if you're finding that you're chomping at the bit because it is such a large class, you know, feel free to just PM me and I'll give you a little sort of mini side assignments uh, and, and tasks. Uh, keep in mind, I mean, <laughs> I've been at this game a long time. You want work to do? I can find you a lot of work to do. <laughs> But uh, I actually think it's in your best interest. The program is laid out in a very specific way. I actually think it's in your best interest just to concentrate on the very specific week and just do tons and tons and tons of examples and workthroughs um, of the specific week's um, module. To get going here at the get-go, of course, we're going to have to, you know, introduce you to the idea of uh, a lot of behaviors that you're probably not going to like. So, you know, I encourage all the level oneers if you're kind of like, okay, well, I got, you know, all these sort of template documents I got set up on the site. Well, now is the time for you to start doing some verbal diarrhea and uh, releasing your history of pre-TRI. Um, and getting it out and sometimes that can be an extremely long process for some people you know get you know so I'm talking to the people that are kind of like well I think I'm already uh, trust me there's lots of work you can do you could spend the next week and I think that we actually open up the strategic planning stuff fairly soon here but you could spend whatever free time you have here just simply getting out your story in that sort of journal you know, if you're going to use Google Docs, if you're going to use Microsoft Word, I don't really care. If you're going to use toilet paper, fine by me. Just get it out. Now is the time for your verbal diarrhea. And, you know, I even found it fascinating sitting with some of the in the level one class. People were sort of reiterating and all of the very classic uh, retail responses were coming up. Well, what happens if I miss the move here? Oh, is Bitcoin going to move? What am I going to do? You know, and all this kind of stuff. And it's just, you know, okay, well, you know, this is the whole point where we have to sort of get it out and, and release all that previous um, history. What did you do well in the past? What did you maybe not do well? Did you have any sort of skills? You know, are you bringing any baggage to your uh, trading? So, um, you know, did you have any maybe bad experiences with, you know, pump groups or shills or, you know, br bad brokers? Or maybe you, you know, you were told to buy something and it went belly up and so now you hate all capitalists. I don't know what it is, but the point here now is you got to get it out. And actually, I was really pleased with Grim. Um, I think uh, you all are in fantastic hands. He's such a great uh, uh, leader for um, for, uh, for for new people to trading, if anything. And because he's gone through the program and he now is basically a professional trader, uh, he trades all sorts of different markets. So it's not really like you can say, oh, crypto, uh, is, is that a market you know about or versus options or something? I mean, he trades everything under the sun. Um, and he really understands this idea of the process. So please understand, level oneers, um, your big objective here for the level one is to understand and learn this thing called the process. Um, so, as I said there a moment ago, just sort of start everything off. If you guys have questions, this is exactly when uh, I want to uh, address those questions that maybe you didn't talk about in class. And I do remember there was one question in particular that I even said, please ask me in the broiler chicken show. 
Uh, there's a whole crap load of you in here. So does anybody remember which, uh, what that question was? Um, like I said, I didn't look, <laughs> I'll try and load this browser uh, tab up here. Uh, like I said, most of my tabs all died when my browser crashed there a moment ago, but uh, we'll see what it goes. Uh, oh yeah, the replay function. Great. Thank you. Awesome. So, and, and, you know, also too, not only does the level oneers have uh, Grimm as the instructor, but you also have two kick-ass TAs that are just like little stealth fighters sort of riding along right beside the convoy, just zipping in and out. Just it's so cool. Shark Toshi's past it, like posting like uh, schematics of crypto security uh, flows and stuff like that. People are like just popping in these questions out of nowhere. And it's so cool. I mean, and I think I even said in the class, like our aim, and I don't really want this to be sales pitchy, but please understand, guys. Our aim is really to actually undersell the program. But once you get in the program, then we over deliver. And uh, I actually found I was so impressed last term, uh, the level two uh, program, we had basically three instructors through the entire level two program that all could be instructors, all just blitzing these people from 10 different directions. Got the same thing happening this week or uh, this term. Uh, for level tours, Karan's awesome. Totally. I mean, the great part about it is we eat our own cooking. Kiran is a funded trader at that top step that you guys always hear me barking about. He went through the process of learning how to trade at TRI. He loves the tools that uh, he actually teaches in the level two program, he uses them on a daily basis, and is a funded trader just doing his thing, running his small business of trading. I mean, what, what you couldn't have like a, a better instructor. Okay, I mean, it's perfect. Uh, so uh, I'm just, I'm over the top. I, in fact, actually this, uh, you know, I mean, look at this site. Sjord's actually making this site. Uh, I mean, any of you uh, over on YouTube, you probably don't. Do any of you remember my 1980s website? <laughs> you have to understand this sort of world that I come from if you can remember Brian's 1980s website. <laughs> this place is incredible. So... Uh, okay, so I do remember. Ah, uh, Rob remembers. Oh yeah, Rob, you got to give us. I get you got to do it. Give us a greeting, sir. Roar! <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right, our TRI meetup. I think that's gonna have to be the formal greeting. But I don't know how many animals we're gonna have in there by the end. <laughs> by the time we get another teed up, <laughs> another uh, meetup. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you know, as you can see, we like to have fun here, right? The whole point of this is let's have fun. Uh, as they, uh, I, we used to, in, when I used to work in the uh, bullpens in the brokerage industry, all the old timers go would go. Uh, well, you can either laugh or you can cry. You might as well laugh because crying sucks. <laughs> so anyway, and these are, you know, these are guys who go through cycle after cycle watching people get absolutely destroyed FOMOing, right? The, the irony of it all is what we do here at TRI, there's nothing new about this. It's it's the same poop, it's just different piles. Okay, uh, so uh, let's just do a quick sort of tutorial walkthrough on that. Uh, and remember all my tabs blew up, so all my charts are gonna be an absolute mess here. Um, there was one chart that I've been talking with the public uh, that probably it probably frames our whole conversation here today. I think it's this one. Yeah, there we are. Okay, so I'll probably be doing most of the conversation uh, with the public here off of this chart, but uh, uh, da, 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 da. That's an interesting default. Uh, let's go uh, BTC USD. And boom. And we'll go candlestick chart. All right. So, uh, anybody, uh, we had a perfectly good question. Actually, I really like it. Oh, thank you for the upvote, Peter. Appreciate it. Uh, and, you know, like um, as Peter just said there, uh, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. Uh, ring the bell um, on the uh, on the YouTube page if you find value in this. Um, I I mean me personally, I'm not really big on all these sort of you know marketing shilling kind of stuff. But uh, you know Julian and David and all the marketing department and stuff like that, they love it when you do all that kind of stuff. 
All I really hope at the end of the day is you feel like there's something that I've said here over this next hour that might be a little bit of value to you. You go, all right, well, you know, I listened to him on two times speed, so I didn't have to burn a whole hour. I only had to listen to half an hour of his nonsense. Uh, but that was kind of interesting what he said there. So maybe I'll write that down and I'll look for that kind of thing in the future. That's the whole point of uh, why I do these public rants. Uh, I think I've told you before, uh, always, it's, I've been at this game so long, I've seen so many people who are like, I can predict the future, the market's going to do what I say, and eventually they get embarrassed. So I really don't like going down those kind of roads saying, I think this will happen, so bet all your money because I'm telling you this is a lock. That that kind of conversation is, you know, you may be right, seven, eight, nine, ten, eight, I haven't seen nine, nine times out of ten, but I suppose, you know, even seven, eight times out of ten would be really great odds. Um, but there's always that one or two times, and, uh, and oh boy, um, it, it's unrecoverable. So why put yourself into that kind of position? And ironically enough, that's sort of my, the basis of my sort of whole approach to why I want to teach you is don't ever put yourself into that kind of position. It's not worth it. If anything, I would actually build a plan and fully say, look, it, I expect to be wrong. Yeah, good 30, 40% of the time. It, that's, that, that is perfectly realistic. But when I'm right, what's got to happen? Anybody? When I'm right, something's got to happen. Thank you, Ryan. Man, Ryan. Hey, Ryan, did you get paid on that uh, ZVO? <laughs> uh, man. Uh, yep. Yeah. Uh, we had uh, Andrew. Uh, the Andrew got paid on Overstock. I think he banged out like a 10X on that thing. Ay, caramba. So the point here is don't don't go for the I'm Mr. Right guy buy my newsletter uh, just do whatever I do you're guaranteed to make money route that it's it's a mugs game you're asking for trouble going down that road uh, and the weird part about it what I found is that the market actually moves through like uh, literally I would even say like thousands and thousands of little cycles. Um, contained within much bigger cycles, right? Whether Jupiter, Saturn, cross kind of bullshit. Uh, Brian's, you know, demographic cycles, interest rate cycles, right? Those are huge, huge cycles. But I would even argue uh, within those cycles, there were even smaller cycles that actually, uh, when I was a broker, we used to have an expression. I remember one guy used to always say, if you want to know what's going to do well in the next few years, just look back 30 years ago. So if you think about the early uh, 2000s, I think George Bush days, what was a really good investment in sort of the late 60s, early 70s? Oil. <laughs> um, so it's interesting how uh, 30 years ago, like now, that's sort of like 1990. What would act, what act, what sectors of the economy did really well over the next, you know, 5, 10, 15 years uh, ahead of that? Uh, I might argue things like uh, defense industry. <laughs> I remember in the early 90s, oh man, if you had bought like Northrop Grumman, Raytheon, uh, Carlyle Group, <laughs> Uh, my job, I don't know whether Carlisle is public or not, but anyway, you know, everybody should know who Carlisle is. BAE, I mean, oh my God, those stocks went absolutely insane after the first Gulf War, right? Technology was here. Yeah, and of course, uh, that meant the price tags went higher and higher and higher. <laughs> so, you know, and then also too, like, you know, if you, if you invested in any particular sectors, in the early 1990s, thinking about, you know, what's the world going to look like in 2000, 2001, 2002. Um, you know, there was this thing that started up called the uh, the interneting, I think it was called, something like that. I mean, there were winners and losers. I mean, you could have bought Netscape. Does anybody remember Netscape? Um, I don't even know what eventually ended up happening with this stock. Was it just acquired by somebody else? 
I mean, hell, you could have bought Yahoo. I mean, how's Yahoo stock done? I mean, it really hasn't performed like all of them. So, Pets.com. Well, see, you know, Pets.com, they came out right at the top of the cycle, though, right? Um, so, oh, is, is Netscape Mozilla, like Firefox? Is that Netscape? I did not know that. Oh, son of a gun. Oh, okay, well, that makes sense. Oh, interesting. I never, hey, look at that. You learn something new every day. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. You taught something. So, Brian, <laughs> you guys, I'm not going to give you any value today, but hey, Brian learned something, so it's a win win, right? Upvote, subscribe, hit the bell. <laughs> ah, Brian's in that. All right, enough bullshit, Brian. Get on with the show. Um, okay, so. For our level oneers, uh, we had a really cool question in the uh, level one class, and that was uh, Brian. If I have to uh, pull down my chart and hunt uh, setups manually, day in day out, uh, oh my god, uh, how the hell am I going to get to 100 paper trades? Well, one of the ways that you can sort of shortcut um, the sort of trading uh, learning process is this handy little thing. I mean. Keep in mind, I used to actually have a guy, and I don't know if I can show this to you uh, on here or not. Let's see if I can do this. Um, when I was, and keep in mind, I don't know whether you guys realize, uh, does anybody know, let's see if you guys on YouTube know, how did Brian get his price charts when he was uh, first learning how to trade? How did Brian get his price charts when he was first learning how to trade? <laughs> no, this is before the days of fax. I re hell, I used to sell the fax paper over the over the over the phone. <laughs> Fuck, that was a horrible job. Oh my goodness. <laughs> uh, yeah, I used to get them in the mail. Can you believe that, you YouTubers? And everybody put a comment down whether you could actually believe that I used to get my price charts. In fact, I had uh, Andrew and Shane over at my place the other day. And I was showing them the price charts that I used to get in the mail. And they're just like off the, they're almost like tissue paper. Here, I'll show you. Uh, oh, I don't think I can turn the camera on with the OBS. Oh, that's too bad. Oh, well, you can't see it. Anyway, so I used to get my price charts in the mail. I mean, that's how long I've been playing this stupid game. <laughs> Racing pigeon. <laughs> None of those slow ass pigeons. I want one of them racing pigeons. <laughs> All right, so the point of the matter here is, when I first learned how to trade, and actually even when I was trading with the CME boys, people used to say this, is they used to take a price chart and print it off. And this one guy would take sort of his chart and make it a five minute chart. And uh, he was a big candlesticks guy. Oh Jesus, now what have I done? Uh, I kind of screwed this up, sorry. Um, I'll go back to four hour. Uh, all right, and so we'll just assume this is a five minute chart, whatever. Um, and he would just literally take like his ruler, and he and I love this story because it's so perfect, right? This guy he worked at some factory, right? And he hated his job, and he's like, I want to be a trader. I know I can do this. I can do this. He used to print off the price chart of the previous day of the S and P five hundred, and he would sit on the bus because he had like an hour long bus ride to work. And he would just take like a ruler or a book or something and just put it right over the price chart and just simply say, okay, well, what I've you know learned in my most recent um, you know studies of candlestick patterns, um, take his book and just put it right over the candle and go, okay, now what do I do? Right, and unfortunately I can't really do this. What I'm trying to show you is he would just literally take the, the book and just walk himself through the candles. And now what do I do? 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 Go up, there's a potential empire. Can everybody see the empire? Can everybody see the reload short zone? You can't? Well, get your ass in the fucking program. <laughs> anyway, I see a short setup. I don't know if the market's going to move higher or not, but a professional trader's got to step in. Now, what do you do? All right, I'm short. Now, what do you do? Where's my stop? Now, what do I do? Okay, where's my stop? Now, what do I do? Okay, where's my stop? Etc. 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 And he would just sit there on the bus and just literally teach himself how to trade. And actually, it turns out I didn't know what was going to happen here, but it turns out 
that, you know, if we just zoom in here, this is the kind of stuff I'm trying to teach you for free. But if it's just too hard to pick up uh, when I do these free videos, like I said, that's the whole reason why we have the school. But there is the reload short zone. Right in there. Change that to red. And we'll make it like, you see me do this, right? And then we were dragging the bookmark across and we were like, oh boy, that's an empire. Well, I could short there, right? Or I could just work my offer in the reload zone, right? And you just, okay, now what do I do? Where's my stop? Where's my entry? What do I do? What do I do? Oh, look at that nice. Another fractal top just came in. All right, well, now we're really failing. Now, you know, oh boy, if my trading system is to sell M tops, okay, now what do I do? Right? Now what do I do? Now what do I do? Now what do I do? And just literally, you practice this on the bus for like an hour long straight every single day. Got to the point where he's getting pretty good at identifying candle patterns, went off to top step, got traded, made a million dollars. Now he's laughing at everybody who rides the bus and just sits there, picks their nose while they're riding the bus. <laughs> you know, might as well use the time constructively. <laughs> So, you know, there is there is one way that you can approach vetting setups, and it's the old sort of manual way. Now, it turns out, you know, anybody who's set up on sites like TradingView, and I don't know whether this is uh, common across a lot of Internet sites, but there's no reason why, and we were just looking through this, you can't, and this is on TradingView, you just pull up your chart, and you just hit the replay button. And we're going to take our mouse and we'll go to here. And literally, it starts the price action from that point. And you can just, just like I said there a moment ago, right? You can go uh, press play. All right, one tick. Now what do I do? One tick. Now what do I do? One tick. Let it go. Now what do I do? Right? Etc. 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 So, oh, there's a reload short zone. Do I want to drill down to a lower time frame? Look for maybe a nice little M or inside bar or something? Get short, whatever. You now, the point here is this can speed up your learning process and hunting setups a lot faster. And actually, it's really, it's great, you know, especially when you start learning these concepts to be able to go, okay, well, I was, you know, thinking this is a trade location, higher time frame, whatever. Now I'm looking for structure to come in. Where do I place my entry? Where do I place my stop? Where's my minimum profit objectives? And then just see what happens. So hopefully that helps answer that question. What do you think, guys? Uh, I don't know whether the, um, the person who asked that question is on the call here today. Like I said, I, uh, I think I guess I... Uh, so just pick some tickers and go. It's me. Um, it doesn't matter. The, what I will say, though, is you cannot run this off of like one of those commodity contracts that has uh, you know, like a continuous contract where you go one exclamation mark. So, uh, you know, if you go like, uh, you know, like GC one exclamation, I trade gold. Look at me. I'm a gold trader. I don't think it works here very well for this. Yeah, see when you click on it for some reason, and I think it's because there must be something with the data feed, it just, it doesn't work. So uh, my suggestion is pick your gold contract. And of course, if I was trading gold right now, I'd probably be looking at something like a August uh, GCQ. Oh, eh. well, I'm not quite sure why I did that. 2020, oh, there we go. Oh, are you gonna work? What's going on? GCQ. Oh, all right. 2020. There we go. Now, when you come over here and you do it, there you go. See how that works? So, you know, the point here, uh, please understand if you're in the level one program, we're going to spend probably the first month or so actually going through a lot of what we call eating the vegetables. So, uh, that's building your trading plan, strategic vision, tactical vision, um, you know, money management, where are you trading, why are you trading, etc. Um, what times a day, you know, you know, what does your sort of, what, what, what kind of trader do you envision yourself, all that kind of stuff. Um, the second half of the program uh, for the level one, we actually get into teaching you the nitty gritty of actually building the three reason the three step setup 
location um, um, indicator confirmation and um, and structure so what I would just simply suggest for now and believe it or not well I know this is gonna sound crazy but for now I would actually like and you know we should probably I don't know whether we talked about it too much in class uh, we'll probably make more reference to it as we go forward here but frankly speaking I'd actually like you just to continue trading as you are now but one thing different is I want you now if you are going to uh, start logging and journaling I want you and really you're kind of limited in your knowledge so I don't really care whether you win or lose on your trade idea what I want you to do is concentrate on forcing yourself to only consider trades where the risk reward number that's this thing in here is um, is at least two to one uh, you can see at this kind of level if I bought here and said I was going to take profits here and I was going to risk to here that's one to one but I don't really care about whether your trades right now are winners or losers I don't get I don't care and you probably have some ideas of hey I have heard Brian talk about W's before so you know maybe you say well you know that sure looks W Brian so I'm gonna paper trade this right getting used to the habit of logging and journaling so that means every single number here you have to record so 11 or 16 11 90 my stops going to be down below here 15 79 something along those lines so when those numbers are in then you're going to drag your profit tool up to two to one i'm and and you're just going to simply log the trade and really what I really want you to do is I just want you to get into the habit of this process I mean frankly speaking that's that's not a terrible trade um, but Frank I don't care whether your trades win or lose money right now I don't care and in fact I would actually expect most of your trades won't make money and that's fine um, what I really want you to do is get into the habit of logging and journaling right you've seen this stuff before and of course you're going to see this out the butt here for the next <coughs> excuse me uh, a few months at least uh, but we have like sample uh, journals right so that I talked about verbal diarrhea well that's what all this is right uh, this is what I really want to see you starting to work on and I want to see um, um, and these are just pure samples, right? I want to see you starting to log. Okay, I have this idea of buying Bitcoin. I'm, you know, I mean, obviously these are a little bit more advanced concepts. Do I have I done my trader checklist, that kind of stuff? But I want you logging things like where you think you were going to be buying, uh, where you think you're going to be exiting, uh, what eventually happened. Was it a win or a loss? Uh, like I said right now, I don't really care too much about the actual specifics of your trade. You are going to learn why it's so important for us to trade setups. So don't really worry too much. In fact, you even want to write in this column right now, ah, that Beamish guy bought on the site, so what the hell, I'm going to write his coattails. Fine, I don't give a shit. Point here is this is the habit, the process. This is all the stuff, right? These are student logs that... Uh, we built for other students in the years gone by um, you know this just so happens to be uh, uh, just sort of a template that we uh, like to give people um, to sort of just illustrate you know what this logging process looks like so and of course every, you know everybody understand please this is very individual stuff so I mean it's not like you can use the templates that we use but the point here is I don't give a shit whether your trade ideas work or not right now don't worry about that. What you got to do is you just got to get these tools up and running. And, you know, like you, you uh, I had showed you there a moment ago. Did I put away that chart? Uh, over here, right? This is really what I want to see. Now, it might be, well, you know, I was thinking some guy on social media told me to buy. Yeah, and Brian says I got a risk against low. So that means I'm thinking about buying here. So that means I got to have my two to one way up here. I don't care but this is what I want you to try and get into the habit of doing okay 
that's this is the focus right now is to get into this stream of behavior who is it that somebody asked that question I don't know <laughs> and, oh look at this uh, what's going on over there on uh, social media YouTube page Ah, uh, Philson, I love your reply to that dude the other day. That was awesome. So, Philson, can you please be my friend? <laughs> that was totally awesome. <laughs> uh, hats off to you, dude. That was awesome. Uh, what's Oscar? Oscar and the Riviera Brothers. These two guys are awesome, man. I want to make uh, the Southern California Connection. Uh, yeah, let's see. And if you're level one, do yourself a favor and put your money aside after until after you've logged 100 paper trades. You'll thank me later. Trust me. <laughs> yeah, we went uh, we went on for I think about 10, 15 minutes with the level waters. Uh, and, and Joshua, Kevin, Grim, of course, talking. Me in the background. Julian. We're all like, yes, put your money away. Put your money away. Learn the process. <laughs> so. Okay, uh, so did that answer that question? Mr. Uh, question who asked questions, did that answer your question? Will, that was you? Where are you? Yes, awesome, cool. See, it only took me about 45 minutes and I got one question answered. All right, who's next? Who's got a question over there on YouTube? Is Da Vinci, and you know, here's the issue. I see you guys chatting over there on, um, on, uh, on YouTube. You know, eh, is there anybody who went to Vegas and uh, and made money? Uh, broke the bank. Won the jackpot. Does it happen? Yeah. It does happen. Um, so, I guess, you know, as a broker, though, remember... Um, I have to deal with people where they don't win. Uh, I had to deal with the reality of people, you know, though I'm going to bet the whole thing on number nine black or number nine red or whatever it is. Uh, and, and their dreams don't come true. And, of course, when I teach a site, I mean, you saw what happened following the 2017-2018 crypto market. I had to deal with a lot of people that, you know, they they believed in crypto. And the irony of it all is if you bought Bitcoin at four, five, six thousand dollars on the way up, there was a long period of time there where Bitcoin was, what, like three grand? So you're down 50 percent. And yet, hey, I believe in this story. I believe it, that the uh, the system, the man, is fucking us over. Yeah, well, I mean, that's that's price, right? Um, and make no mistake about it. Uh, the 1% is having fun with Bitcoin. They are moving the price around. They are going to encourage the public to buy tops, and they are going to encourage the public to sell bottoms. Absolutely, without a shadow of a doubt. There's no reason to think that this is any different. It's exactly the same shit, just different pile. So I have to deal with reality. And the worst part about capitalism, guys, is you, you know, when you open the newspaper, do you hear the sad story? Do you hear the person who went bankrupt? Do you hear the person who lost, who was a millionaire uh, but lost it all? Do you hear the billionaire story who actually went, they went, you know, into foreclosure? No, you never hear those stories. And trust me. You know, 90, 95% of the, of the market, they lose money at trading. It's no accident. This is hard work, what we do here. Don't take it lightly. Now, if you want to go and invest in something and just put it away, well, you know, there's always appropriate risk to take. That's why we have those two rules of investing. You could go and throw 5% of your net worth into Bitcoin and just say, man, you know, it's my hedge. I don't have a problem with that. That's that's actually not a bad strategy. You know, if you had like, of course, I say things like government bonds and the whole crypto community freaks out. But, you know, ideally what we really want to do, and this is this is going to be a big message for the level oneers, uh, you know, in the weeks and months ahead, is um, <coughs> what we really want to do uh, as money managers is we actually want to have like a very diversified approach to managing our portfolios. But this is like financial planning kind of talk. 
And I don't know whether a lot of people in, um, <laughs> in watching this YouTube feed or even the slightest bit interested in sort of sound money management. But in essence, uh, you really should have a nice spread of assets. You should have some cash. You should have some guaranteed investments. You should have some equity. It's not a bad idea having some real estate. Everybody's got to have a home to live in. You know, whether the difference between home ownership um, and the cost of maintaining that home ownership and, the, and rent, whether uh, that's, that's advisable given your current um, you know, state. And then also, too, remember, which is extremely dangerous, whenever you own a home, technically in our society, you don't actually own the home, by the way. The banks own the home. And, you know, 2008 financial crisis, uh, that and, you know, like we even, um, you know, you want a nasty slap in the face about reality. I showed somebody this uh, earlier today, um, but, um, <laughs> you know, I've talked to you on YouTube a few times about this. You know, the, the sad part about our society is if they if the bankers really want to just pull the carpet out from underneath uh, the market and cash in on all those homeowners that are in a very weak refinancing position, <laughs> cha-ching, you know, and if you don't believe me, go and watch this three-hour documentary on what the bankers do to us in our modern-day society. So the point of the matter here is, ideally, we want to have a nice spread of assets. You know, there's an old adage, and I personally really like this adage, right? Neither a debtor nor a lender be. Um, if you don't, aren't and beholden to people uh, for debt, then really that whole, and, and then also too, if you don't like save a whole bunch of money and then depend on the bankers to pay you short-term interest rates for a living, if you don't live in that world, then all of the banker shit's meaningless. I mean, the only thing that really matters is are your deposits, what you have at these banks, uh, insured and guaranteed by governments. If they are, then yeah, I think you can feel relatively safe that, that your money's not going anywhere. But there's always the Northern Rock scenarios. Anybody in the UK watching this will know what I'm talking about. Um, and, you know, e even in the best of times, right? Good, sound portfolio management. And they always make the case, you know, 3%, 5% of your money in uh, gold, right? And silver. It's a good hedge just in case shit hits the fan. Well, same sort of logic here. The irony of it all, though, is I actually think Bitcoin's going to give you better percentage returns for your money than gold. But ironically enough, you know, the market that I really like right now is silver. <laughs> so Da Vinci, uh, I think the best trade actually there a while ago was to sell his house and buy silver. <laughs> but uh, who knows? <laughs> we'll see what happens. So, I mean, like, do I think Bitcoin's a half decent idea? I think it has an appropriate role in any portfolio. Uh, can you make profits from trading Bitcoin? Sure. And I think you could build a trading plan that could attack Bitcoin and trade Bitcoin exactly the same way that I used to trade crude oil when I was at a prop firm. Or you could trade gold or you could trade the S&P 500. It is that mature of an asset right now. Nothing wrong with that at all. And you can make a great living in whatever your local currency is, just trading Bitcoins. Um, but I hope you understand that there's those are two very, very different conversations. And that's a big part of what the level oneers are going to have to go through over the next week or two, is you really have to ask yourself, what is it I want to get out of Bitcoin or cryptocurrencies or trading or whatever? Am I saving for my retirement? Am I speculating? Am I uh, running a, a swing trading portfolio? Uh, what's my balance between, if I really like crypto, what's my balance going to be between like aggressive shitcoins uh, trading and investing versus, you know, conservative Bitcoin, um, Ethereum, Litecoin maybe. So uh, the point here is that there's a million different ways to skin this cat. And we really should take a balanced approach to uh, managing our, ourselves in the marketplace at any given point in time. 
And the irony of it all is, you know, I don't know whether you realize, but if you actually had very a balanced portfolio of debt and equities and commodities, ironically enough, uh, yes, over the past you know two or three months, equity prices have fallen, but bond prices have gone up. So the irony of it all is that people that have a very well diversified portfolio, nothing has really happened to them over the past few months. I mean, that's the irony of all this. Anyway, uh, kind of a funny tangent there. Um, okay, so uh, any level winners? Last call? Any questions that maybe you wanted to pick Brian's brain about? Uh, yeah, that's right, Rocker. Remember, your number one job is a trader. That's if you decide to go about this uh, trader's life. Kevin Stewart. Kevin Stewart's typing lots of stuff over there. What does he say? Da Vinci 15 is looking at the long run. Okay. He believes that fundamentals for Bitcoin in the market is building inverse infrastructure and that it will be integrated into the mainstream markets. Well, sounds good. Um, you know, I always ask the question, is it a good idea to go shoot your wad all in one go? Or is it maybe a good idea just to slowly average your way in? Um, Love Da Vinci dearly. Uh, is he really good at calling tops and bottoms and and uh, timing his uh, purchases of sizable trades um, all at once? I don't know. Uh, that's a tough one. Uh, we all know how volatile the corn can be, right, Kevin? <laughs> I mean, let's call a spade a spade. This thing's up and down like a whore's drawers. Do you really want to go shoot your wad all in one go? I don't know. So, uh, you know, obviously, uh, I can't speak for Dev, and maybe we ought to have a conversation with Dev one of these days. We did an interview with him a year or two ago that I thought uh, was received really well. And actually, something really cool, uh, one of our OGers, uh, James, um, uh, actually suggested to another social media guy, uh, DJ Thistle, um, and this guy's so chill, this DJ Thistle guy. I mean, he's like one of the cool kids. Uh, and it's so funny because whenever I hang around and talk with the cool kids, I always fuck things up. <laughs> it's, it's, it's the hallmark of my life, I swear. So, uh, you know, if I was, um, if I was, uh, you know, back in high school, right, uh, this, uh, I don't know where the hell he is, but uh, James here, he was like, hey, you should, uh, I guess it was over here. Uh, he's like, hey, you should uh, get in touch with uh, Beamish and uh, do a show about uh, astrology and all that kind of stuff. Um, and I was like, yeah, man, I'm totally down. I don't know where the hell I put it. Tweets and replies? How the hell does this stupid thing work? <laughs> I'm so bad at this social media stuff. Sorry, everyone. Um, ma, 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 yeah, okay. Up, 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 up. There he is, this guy. He's like one of the cool kids. So, you know, if you want to if you wanna follow like one of the guys that's like, you know, uh, this guy's down, he's hip, he's chill. Like that is not the word that the kids use. He's like one of the cool kids. And it's so cool because we have a couple of the cool kids here at TRI and I, I try really hard to like sort of hang with them, but it's clearly obvious that I'm the nerd. <laughs> but anyway, um, so uh, James even suggested this gentleman that uh, maybe we have a, a fun little, um, uh, a little, uh, yeah, right here might be uh, AEC's going on uh, Tone Vase's show, I guess. And uh, James was kind of like, uh, yeah, well, why don't you get together and talk astrology with Brian? So, uh, yeah, and actually he was like, well, that'd be kind of fun. So uh, that'd be kind of cool. And, um, you know, like uh, you guys, uh, I guess there's quite a few of you that likes uh, Dav here, right? Um, so, uh, yeah, it would be nice to uh, touch base with Dav again, see what's on his mind, what he's doing. So, and then also, too, everybody, remember, and he, I think he has kids, too. Remember, we all got to have a home to live in. Uh, have any of you guys tried to uh, raise a couple kids out of a one-bedroom, um, uh, not even one-bedroom, like a Holiday Inn um, hotel uh, room? Uh, it's challenging. <laughs> so, also, too, you know, back to that sort of financial planning kind of conversation, all this kind of stuff. 
is please understand everybody you gotta have a home to live in <laughs> so uh, and he's a dad too so dav uh, i mean uh, be a good role model for your kids hey eh? <laughs> give them a roof uh, a roof to sleep over uh somebody saying here uh what are your thoughts on jcp uh is that one of those retail stocks oh boy now, the problem here is I don't think you can really make too many big sort of conclusions about the market until we get beyond this 2020 turbo. Um, I, I still honestly believe there's another there's another two of these crisis events coming up ahead of us before the year is over. So, I mean, you could look at a price chart right now and go, yeah, that's a bull, that's a bear. But the problem is, is that everything can change in a heartbeat. I mean, you saw what happened there in uh, in uh, February, March. Uh, I mean, you had uh, Dear Leader saying, ah, oh, everything's fine. And then all of a sudden, all hell broke loose. Um, so, you know, do we go into another one of those swoons? Oh, boy. I, you know, and it's kind of like the same thing with Bitcoin right now is I kind of want to force myself that the only time I'm really going to really step up and buy something in size is when I see fear and absolute chaos. Uh, we're not in that kind of market state anymore, right? If we look at the, uh, the S&P 500 chart, you know, I started to do on the daily shows. Um, we're actually nowhere near the bottom anymore. So, you know, if I was going to come in on the long side, like we were interested in some of those uh, travel stocks like uh, Carnival Cruise Lines we were talking about, Norwegian Cruise Lines, um, there were a bunch, of course, the tech stocks, a lot of them bottomed. But that's, that's the rally window now. In my opinion right now, we and this is the same thing with Bitcoin, which really sucks, is that really I might argue this is a toss of the coin. Has anybody got a coin in their pocket? Who can flip a Bitcoin for me here? Tell me which side it lands on. Then I'll tell you which way the market's going. So that's that's kind of the odds of the market direction right now. And, you know, considering um, <laughs> Rob flipped his paper wallet. <laughs> <laughs> problem is it only had a half a bitcoin in there rob though so does that count <laughs> hey shane um shane did you see that uh, we got the uh, meow room set up so uh andrew and you should be good to go the three of us um yeah totally i mean this is a really interesting apex and it's the same thing with the stock market We've come right, you know, and I think I had sort of said uh, on YouTube, there was a really cool video uh, interview with a guy named Zell, who is like sort of super smart uh, investor, or hedge fund manager, billionaire, blah, blah, blah. And he was saying, you know, in his eyes, uh, when we got down into here in the sort of the crisis, the shit was hitting the fan, blah, blah, blah. Uh, he was sort of saying, uh, you know, it's not really like people are panic selling. Because the sellers, they don't, they're not really interested in selling unless they get these prices up here. There was, they weren't driven to sell. You know, like if there was like a, a credit crisis, right? They'd be driven to sell. The irony of it all is the crisis was in the oil market. And, you know, you, they were driven to sell. And you saw what happened to oil prices, eh? Oh, my goodness. I would imagine what, uh, what uh, imagine if the uh, S&P 500 traded negative like that. Holy shit. <laughs> oh, it's the end of capitalism. Um, so, you know, you know, and so any kind of stock um, ideas right now are contained with the context of this. Market could break higher. Market could break lower. It's almost like a 50%, um, you know, toss of the coin here. So, you know, looking at a stock like JCPenney, obviously uh, entirely dependent on this sort of brick and mortar uh, retail model. You know, we do have a number of people on the site that do like to sort of chase like bargains, you know, stocks that have been really beaten down. 
Uh, but the problem here that I found is that quite often stocks can go much further, much longer than anybody ever expects. Uh, and there are some stocks. I remember there was a retailer in Canada, um, uh, Simpsons, I think it was. Anyway, Eaton's as well. Um, and and I, I and I was an options trader at that point. I happened to uh, pick up the Equity Desk uh, phone one day, and uh, this old timer dude, he's like the Eaton's. Uh, I think it was. Um, I think it was Eaton's. It was either Eaton's or Simpson's. I can't remember. But the stock was like uh, a buck and a half or something like that. And he's going, short it, short it, short it. And I'm like, a buck and a half? There's not really much money to be made there. And, he, and, he, and like, he's like, I said that to my head, of course. I wouldn't say that on the phone because I was just a, a, a trading desk jockey. And he's just like, hit it, hit it, hit it, hit it, hit it. And a week and a half later, the company went bankrupt and the stock was worthless, zero. And he, he, all, he just covered the position at zero. So uh, please be aware that that uh, there is absolutely no guarantee of any quote unquote bottom in an equity asset. Doesn't have to be. It's technically it's it's a it's a proxy. It's a growth on uh, it's a proxy on growth. <laughs> if 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 it's dying and it goes bankrupt, well, technically the equity is worth zero. Um, you know, we could take a look at, I mean, the number one concern I would have about a retailer right now is the problem is brick and mortars, they have to carry a massive amount of inventory, uh, especially if you have like a chain store across the country, which means that, you know, that's capital. And quite often retailers actually have to borrow money uh, to maintain that, um, to maintain that inventory um uh in anticipation of things like you know future christmas seasons and sales and all that i'm looking for my finviz but it looks like i lost that on when my oh, i guess i didn't load that back up uh all right well i'll do it over here uh, uh finviz Dot com. So, just out of curiosity, let's see what the train wreck of the balance sheet looks like. JCP. And I don't know. I'm having fun here today. I'm trying to answer people's questions. I know you probably want to talk about the corn. So, we'll finish off with this and then head on over there. So, uh, you know, when I look at a company like this, first thing that jumps out at me, oh my goodness. So right now they are literally carrying four times the amount of debt on their balance sheet than equity. And they're losing money. This has got trouble written all over it. So even if I did see a W or you know something along those lines, I mean the chart would have to look just absolutely stunningly pristine for me to take a shot on a name like this. This, you know. What they're really going to have to do is they're going to have to sell off assets. And they have to sell off assets and pay down this debt. They probably don't want to. Uh, but I think that's really the only way out for them uh, right now. Especially as they're bleeding money. Because at some point you can see they might actually run out of money. And if they have to do that, then they, that means they'll have to go to Wall Street and try and do a financing and of course wall street's going to screw them they're going to say you want a financing roll the stock back show me 30 million shares out we saw this happen to at&t don't think that these big companies can't do it they do it all the time so at&t is a perfect example of that um, general motors another really good example of that these are big blue chip companies that they still stick around, but they get reorganized and the old shareholders get screwed. Keep in mind, the bondholders, they're still honored. So I, I, I couldn't look at something like this. Sucks. And then also, too, I mean, if we have another wave or two of this coronavirus, does that help the brick and mortar retailers or does that hurt the brick and mortar retailers? I don't think that's going to help them. Mr. Bezos is going to get a little bit richer. <laughs> get used to it. Maybe we should all go and buy one share of Amazon and ride his coattails. <laughs> I don't know. So uh, put it all together. That's my sort of thoughts. The uh, wind is at this company's face. 
and its balance sheet looks pretty grim. I don't see any value here. Uh, I would, I, me personally, I'd leave it alone. Now, having said that, could the damn thing pop up into, uh, you know, 80, 90 cents here on some white knight takeover deal? Could be, you know, I'm certainly not going to say it couldn't happen, but it's not something I would be interested in. Right, hope that helps. And now I see somebody on YouTube's going, for God's sakes, would you stop talking about all this fluff and get on with what's important in the world? And that's one thing and one thing only. <laughs> right, RBM? <laughs> all right. Um, you know, the interesting thing about this, and this is a really hard time in the market for a guy like me, because, you know, you guys want, I, I mean, on balance, everybody and their brother wants higher Bitcoin prices. Everybody, I mean, that's the weird thing about, I mean, there are probably some bears out there, yada, yada, yada. But on balance, people like bull markets more than, or much more than they like bear markets. Like we used to have a saying, um, um, uh, the, in bull markets, everybody makes money. In bear markets, nobody makes money. Uh, and you think about it. I mean, it's uh, this is a, that's like a typical Wall Street, Bay Street kind of thinking, right? Because in bear markets, is it easy to shill paper to people? Hey, buy this stock, you'll get rich. <laughs> Not. <laughs> so financings dry up, right? Speculative fervor dries up. You can't be banging out doubles and all that kind of stuff, right? So, you know, I have to sit here and I have to sort of give you my, my, uh, my opinion, um, which of course, you know, the irony of it all is everybody on the site knows exactly what I think about people's opinions. Uh, my number one advice for you is to really try and identify why are the reasons you're actually going to spend money. If it's purely, hey, I want to make money, man. I, I'm going to go. I'm going to want to buy something, and I want to make a capital gain. Then, if that's the case, then I would strongly suggest that you really concentrate on things like setups, multiple reasons to justify taking your trade. And the problem here right now is I have multiple reasons to not participate. If anything, this is an extreme uncertain period. Trend is not clearly identified. Um, and my hunch is, is that the 1% is going to have a lot of fun with the kids here right now. They might take prices higher, get everybody FOMO uh, on the long side. Man, 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 man. And then, of course, just break their hearts. That's just be capitalism 101. Um, at the same time, too, we may very easily be at a local top and we have to start melting down but the problem is we're we, the jury's still out the jury's sitting in the jury room and we're all sitting here going okay what's gonna happen next what's gonna happen next and i have to honestly with a very straight face and a very honest approach say i don't think anybody really knows what the hell's gonna happen next <laughs> which kind of sucks and you're like click turn that youtube channel off what a waste of time i just sat there for the past hour listening to this idiot rant on just to hear him say, I've got a clue what's going to happen. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's brutal reality. <laughs> Hit the like button, subscribe, ring Colleen's bell. <laughs> um, the bus driver knows that. <laughs> uh, uh, you know, I wouldn't fault people, and we had some just fantastic lower time setups. I mean, you all know, of course, uh, you can see here's probably previous uh, commentary from before. Um, but you all know how much Brian loves his M's and M's as a topping signal. So I'm just going to sort of tell you everything you've probably heard from me say before. Uh, yeah, you're right, Jack. What do you do, eh? Um... So really, you know, and also, too, what you should learn, and we like to call these institutional fingerprints. Keep in mind, this thing was a rip-roaring bull. Hey, I'm a bull. Look at me. I'm a bull. I'm a bull. And somebody came in here and said, uh-uh, you know what? I've had just about a year, enough of your nonsense, Mr. Bitcoin. And they put the top in the market.
right there, right? I mean, we can look back and go, gee whiz, yep, that's where they stopped the bull. So we often like to call these uh, institutional fingerprints because I think that quite literally a new person at trading in our level one program, we're going to uh, be, uh, um, you know, we drive this home uh, repeatedly. But I think you can uh, make the argument <coughs> that we have very uh, discernible, very um, quantifiable areas on the price chart where quite literally supply overwhelmed demand. I mean, that's really all the price chart tells you, right? It's just supply and demand. So, um, you know, and the same thing's on the other side, right? So we can say this bar plus this bar. This is where demand overwhelms supply. So, you know, an, uh, an old boss, and actually it's interesting, I used to, uh, I've got a lot of people that we've referred from TRI to the old prop firm that I was funded with uh, years and years ago. So in a weird sort of way, I actually, uh, I think they, they kind of look nicely on uh, Brian and TRI because uh, I'm helping uh, pad their, their pockets. <laughs> um, but uh, the president of that company, um, he used to always tell us when we were sitting in the, uh, you know, the, the cheerleader room first thing in the morning. Okay, guys, let's go kick some ass. Right? Here's the speech from the president. Let's go. He used to always say, you know, a price chart, there's really only two things that a price chart tells you. And the only, the only levels that matter to a guy like Nebraska is uh, this level here where demand, whoops, uh, sorry. <clears throat> where demand clearly overwhelmed uh, supply and this level here where supply clearly overwhelmed demand. And to a guy like him, these are the only points that matter. All this stuff here in the, in the, in the middle is just bullshit. So uh, we have to acknowledge that, you know, recently we have come back up to a place where supply has overwhelmed demand in the past. And if we think about things like fundamental value and the whole conversation around the happening event and all that, just out of curiosity, what do you think? Is the, Does it cost about $9,700 right now to mine one Bitcoin? I don't think so. Anyone? Anyone? I can tell it does not. Ha ha. I don't know what that was about. So uh, one person here is uh, just in the lounge, posted a number. I'd just be curious. What do you guys think over there on social media? How much does it cost? If I wanted to go out and mine a Bitcoin, how much does it cost to actually mine one of these things? It's probably not the current price. I mean, that's the problem here. So... <coughs> Does that mean Bitcoin has to trade at that price? No. In fact, the market doesn't like trading at value. Uh, the market would prefer to trade at substantially higher than value. <laughs> so it's a really good lesson. Write this down if you don't know this. If you ever see a commodity trading at or below the cost of production, it's probably a buy. It's pretty simple. Um the question ultimately here is, uh, is uh, if it's not trading at value, uh, what's going on here? Um, and I think this is getting into the conversation of store of value. Um, a, uh, you know, the U.S. Federal Reserve System has basically diluted the shit out of the currency again. Um, I think right now... Uh, and and I'd also argue too. What uh, this is the one really good thing about Bitcoin. Did any of you notice what was the one sector that just took off like a rocket when the government put the floor in the stock market? One sector and one sector only just just exploded higher out of um, out of this event. What was that? Anyone? Good, Rob. Rob got the answer correctly. Ralph meow. And then buck, 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 Ralph meow. <laughs> uh, how many more animals can we, uh, how many more animals can we stuff in here? 
Let's say, what does a baby powder uh, say? <laughs> fluff, fluff? <laughs> fluff, fluff, buck, buck, meow, meow, bark, bark. <laughs> Roar! <laughs> oh, goodness. Um, no, energy, I don't think so. Energy didn't really do that well out of the gate. I mean, it has had a nice rally, but what I've noticed is, uh, did you guys notice that like things like Amazon and Microsoft? Uh, in fact, actually, I saw a uh, public article um, that they said the number one outperforming sector right now, ironically enough, is the, uh, or I guess it was the ETF, is, um, where did I do this? Oh, yeah, that's fine. Is the uh, Dow Jones uh, Tech, let's see what the hell is it. Uh, it's, it's like the Dow Tech Fund or something like that. And it's just gone absolutely bananas here. So um, I thought I had it just off the top of my head, but I don't see it here. Sorry, guys. Uh, something like that. What does that say? No. 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 I don't know. Anyway, uh, go look it up yourself if you want. Um, but uh, I thought that was fascinating. You know, we look at things like AMZN, right? Where it, oops, let's try that again. AMZN. Where did the money, keep in mind all that trillions of dollars, right? Where did it go? And you can clearly see it went straight into tech, right? I mean, geez, correction? What correction? Um, so the point here is, hey, Sonny. Sonny! Thank you for the joy you give to me. Sorry. <laughs> Every time I see the guy, uh, everything stops. We have to sing the first line of the song. <laughs> the best show on the planet. Well, that deserves a thumbs up, a like, a subscribe. <laughs> so anyway, the point of the matter here is, <laughs> Sonny derailing me, is... um. We just want to follow the money, right? And I mean, this is a great part about Bitcoin, right? Follow the money. Money clearly poured into Bitcoin here. So, and then also to think about, did I don't know whether I was talking about this publicly. Did I say this on the YouTube uh, public uh, while I was recording here? Um, what were the best sectors uh, to invest in 30 years ago? And the irony of it all is I think probably Boeing is actually probably a good place to step in now. Everybody hates Boeing now, right? But to turn Boeing around, all you got to do is just launch a thousand Tomahawk cruise missiles. at some maybe interesting regime we'd like to have changed. Hmm. You guys kind of see the writing on the walls? Does anybody see what's happening here? <laughs> this is good. It almost feels cliche how what's happening here. But anyway, that's that's another conversation for another day. But uh, I'd said earlier, uh, I don't know whether I was recording or not. Nobody on YouTube uh, confirmed this or not. But, um, you know, years and years and years ago, uh, I learned that um, really you want to know what's going to do well in the economy over the next five, ten years. Just think about the world, what the, what the world looked like 30 years ago. Uh, what were people investing in 30 years ago? And that sort of thinking, you know, Brian's, 17 and a half year uh, uh, generational cycles, the uh, fear, greed assets, that kind of stuff. You can also throw in the Jupiter Saturn cross, Jupiter Saturn Pluto now, Mars conjunct. Oh, my head's going to explode. Actually, it's interesting. Shane, are you still here? Um, where's Shane? Is he still here? Well, no, he's gone. Darn. Anyway, uh, somebody wants me to do a, a celestial uh, presentation uh, over on uh, on YouTube, which I thought would be totally, totally cool. Um, so, uh, conversation about Bitcoin, right up against top end of the range. Yes, we have lots of divergences. The interesting thing here, though, is I have to start sort of saying, you know, the big monster, oh my God, sell signal here off of the bear div. What we really have to say here is if you're a bull, you have to cool your jets and just let this clean up. I have no idea how this is going to clean up here. But I got I got to start seeing some sort of structure develop here. 
So this is extremely problematic for me. Problem is, is that we're actually sort of on the same. Remember we had sort of talked about this recently. We never did get the sort of first M to stop the bull here. I think the noobs on the purple RSI line, I think they got punched in the nose. That's usually what happens, right? On these purple trend lines, usually they get fuck you'd. And that's exactly what this was. We even walked through this. So this was the yahoo part of the RSI move. And this is the, the very typical fuck you that happens to the people that buy up here. But like we said earlier, I still don't have any M's in RSI here. Now, interestingly enough, and I don't know how this plays out, and this is the one reason why I'm really not the biggest fan with RSI, because it doesn't always play out this way. It tries to kind of nuts out sometimes. I could actually, believe it or not, see something like a brand, and really you might even argue, I don't even have to draw a new trend line. We can just go boobity boo. You could technically say that this sort of second trend line is actually still working. And that means that we might actually, believe it or not, call me crazy, we might actually ramp up here just like we did with this move. That could very easily happen again, folks. This is a crazy level that we're at because we're sort of, like I said, it's kind of like you're tossing a coin in the air. You can make the argument more up. You can, like, uh, and where's our uppy? I did kind of a fun image earlier today where I kind of showed the sort of the both the yin and the yang of where we are in the market. I mean, I don't think it's in anybody's best interest to make big bets right here. I mean, you want to hedge yourself against these recent highs? Totally cool. I, I like that thinking totally. Uh, but, you know, going and betting the farm on Bitcoin at uh, $10,000 here, uh, that it's going to moon from here. Oh, boy, that's that's a tough pill to swallow. But uh, this is sort of the way I've been thinking about price action here. And I put a funny tweet out. And <laughs> I talk in a lot of sort of really funny um, uh, isms. <laughs> I have this odd language that I talk. And I put a tweet out earlier today um, that, uh, that uh, you know, if you think about like the letter M. Right. What what is the letter M if we see that in price action? Really, what that is, and you know, think of uh, Nebraska and his and his supply and demand conversation. Right. This is a point where supply overwhelms demand. This is a point where demand overwhelms supply. This is a point where supply overwhelms demand. And now on this, this is actually implying that an even more supply has come into the market. And it's bringing this, uh, that supply overwhelming demand number down. And if we go through this level where demand previously stopped the bear, there was so much demand. If we go through this level, it means that that demand must have evaporated. And if that's the case, then that establishes a new trend. That, you know, this is a core component of our introduction to technical analysis modules. Um, it is sort of the definition of a market in transition. What does a market that uh, that's uh, bullish, right, making higher highs and higher lows, what does it look like when it transitions into a bear? It looks like this, generally speaking. Can you see, in fact, this kind of scenario, this is actually... Um, This is actually almost like two smiles. Whoops. Uh, well, I guess we can do this. Right, where we got this, then we got this, then we got this, then we got this, and then we got this. And, you know, and actually, I guess we're sort of, uh, yeah, we're sort of like right uh, with, without that dip just yet. So let's try that again. Sorry. Uh, there, 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 and we're right there. <laughs> So, uh, like I said earlier, this is a fascinating level. I mean, this is, you know, if you're ever going to sort of identify a war zone where the fight is actually happening, 
it is right here at this level. The fight is literally happening right in front of our eyes. And, you know, the problem with this, of course, is this is where Bitcoin's popping. And, you know, you have guys like uh, there's uh, come some crazy guy, uh, Cobain dude, um, who's like, you know, we're going all in here. But the problem is, do you think he's going to be going, we're, all, we're going all in here? I don't know. You know, like uh, our little trading uh, kind of uh, little fun club we have here in Vancouver. Um, my kind of feeling is I don't really want to get too bullish of Bitcoin until I start hearing the wrecked and uh, margin calls and all that kind of stuff uh, crapping out. Um, so right now, yeah, I mean, it's in my opinion that it's actually best to let the big boys have their fight. My hunch is, for whatever it's worth, and I, I don't know, you just don't know what's going to happen. I don't really like this as a new long trade location. It's extremely dangerous. Um, but you could let this maybe break out if you wanted to play it. And if we got like a Wyckovian check against this high on the other side, that's not a bad way to think about this. I just, it feels to me like we're coming very, very late to the party. Also remember too, guys and girls, <clears throat> that um, this is Sunday. And remember last weekend I did this too. Same damn thing happened. Was uh, the market was pretty strong and we were kind of like, hey, we're going to uppy, uppy, uppy. And then, and I don't remember what was last Sunday. Uh, Sunday, so that was last 10th. So where are we here? Oh, that was over here. So, uh, does that sound right? Am I looking at the right month? Maybe it's two Sundays ago? No, because I was on vacation here. Um, I don't think it was this candle, but I remember I was doing a video and uh, we were kind of conjecturing that maybe the market was moving higher. Might have been a few weeks ago. And then I came back after my uh, my visit with my son, and um, and price had completely collapsed on the other side. So, you know, be careful. I mean, the irony of all this now is this will only be a bull if the bull steps up now. So, like rallies off the lows and these rallies here, that doesn't really mean anything. Go and take out this high and paint me a nice closing bar up top here. And then I can be like, okay, bull's back. We can start hunting longer, uh, long, you know, off lower time frame setups right now. But I'll tell you, and the problem that I have here is that if we ever see the market smiling at us, and, you know, what's really interesting is this might turn into a huge, massive smile. And if it does, uh-oh, we're toast. But just even over the short term, if I see price down below through this sort of 9,200 area, then I think our rally's done for the time being. What I find fascinating about this is that it looks almost exactly like the last cycle. And it's I, it's weird how this, this, this conversation line is just not getting traction with anybody. But I saw the rally, then I saw, you know, the pre-happening dump, then I saw sort of calm through the dump, then I saw the counter trend rally, and I actually think we're sort of like right about here right now. Uh, and if we go, and, uh, and the funny thing is, over the next week or so, I think this is actually just going to drive people crazy. And probably a week from now, we're going to be sitting at just about the same levels, having almost exactly the same conversation. So that's the irony of all this. Um, you know, if this is a top, the shorters are going to come in here. And remember, the shorters, they get paid to worry. So uh, they are going to be worried. <laughs> They're probably going to lose a little bit of hair through this. Because I, I really think it's just going to almost, you know, I think I've said earlier, like what I like to see when I want to take a trade is I want to see, um, you know, you can see this. This is insane volatility. I would actually prefer to see the volatility come out of the market and then set up the next trade. That's actually what I'd like to see, and that's exactly what happened here, right? So, you know, I've said this a few times. I'm not actually really in a big hurry to do anything right here. 
Uh, I can completely respect and can completely understand people coming in at the top end of the range, either lightening up Bitcoins that they bought down here or, uh, you know, well, man, that was last cycle, but really the Bitcoins bought down in here. Um, completely respect that. In fact, that's exactly what I did. We we had an annualized return for our little play fund here in Vancouver of uh, 30%. If you can average greater than 30% uh, over a 10-year uh, period, you've done better than like 90% of all investors ever. Uh, we officially have a 55% year-to-date return for our fund. So why the hell do we need to get any more? <laughs> we don't have to do anything now. <laughs> we can basically take the rest of the year off and we've beaten 90% beaten of all investors ever. So what hurry am I in? I'm not really in any hurry. I, I wish you all the best of luck. I hope Bitcoin does ramp up top here. But I'd be very careful if the scenario is that they take the market up here. If this actually turns into a megaphone and we get three tags of this trend line, which gee whiz, and this is what kills you out of all this, which gee whiz happens to correspond almost perfectly with my original chaos thinking. And I can't believe I got so defensive. Some guy fucking busted my ass over posting this one time. Um, and and I took it just I took it so personally and it turns out I think that's if we resolve up through the top here I think we're gonna go hit mr. Chaos and this is where it gets really scary because megaphones are notoriously awful and they will break a shitload of people's hearts and so what I'm really worried about I would actually prefer that we do this kind of scenario and the correction is nice and polite but what I'm really worried about you can see the potential a B uh, yeah, let's do this a little more professional for you. A, B. If they do decide to take this up top, I can see the cliche. C, D. Gee whiz. Oh, boy. Nice little blow off insanity into chaos. Uh, oh, God. The other side of this. And really, uh, Shane or Andrew, if you're going to be watching this later on, this is exactly what I want is if we do get this blow off top, then the TRI SOFs will start coming alive because that will be a big enough range where I think the 50% retracement is probably going to set up that TRI SOF. So, you know, Ryan, I see you in the uh, in the call here, right? You're, Mr. You're one of our TRI SOFers. Uh, Kvarkinator, there you are. Who else is a TRI SOFer in here? Uh, anyway, we've got a few regulars. Um, so uh, anyway, regulars, if you're watching this, you know, for our Tuesday meetings, um, my hunch is right now the numbers just don't add up for a TRI SOF on the options. They're close, but they're just not quite right. Now, if we do get this blow off top, then I think that is total TRI SOF written all over it. So uh, that, you know. Uh, I don't know. I sure hope you guys got some value out of all that rant. You know, I hate coming on these uh, kind of public broadcasts and just saying, I'm sorry, people, there's there's just nothing for me to do here right now. Uh, you can all clearly see, you know, and you can see on here, not getting much away of price structure. If we do go in M out, remember that smiley face, all that kind of stuff. If we do go in M out here, then I think, you know, probably... Hunting short setups on counter trend rallies is probably the thing to do. Uh, if we do break out through the top, you could probably hunt long setups off the lower time frames. But this is just such a huge battle zone that I don't think it's in any of our best interest to actually really go and like pick fights right here. Kid, like I said, toss to the coin. That's honestly how I feel, everyone. Sucks. I know you want me to say, hey, we're going straight up, we're going straight down, but. I think it's toss of the coin here. Okay, so that's about, uh, I guess what, that's a little past noon on the White Coast. Um, yeah. Well, and you know, the the cool thing, uh, Dissynthetic uh, says uh, uh, library credits is finally coming back. I think I talked a bit about that in recent videos. I know we talked lots about that on the site. Um, I actually heard somebody the other day say, I actually used the thing. I mean, really, the whole bottom line, what, is your cryptocurrency going to survive? 
Is it actually being used for something? <laughs> if it is, that's a good sign. That's all that fundamental analysis we like to talk about. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's absolutely the best thing I can do, Jack. I don't want to blow smoke up your asses. I don't want to tell you something that I don't have a lot of confidence in. I think this market could go either direction here. Um, yeah, I suppose we could throw a profile on. Let's see what uh, profile looks like here. Um, <laughs> and this is what I'm worried about, right? Is they bring it up top here. Who's going to be shorting up here? You see the value trade setting up? <laughs> this, this, I don't know how to say your name. This synthetic, synthetic, dissynthetic. <laughs> <laughs> too many letters <laughs> and then interestingly enough there's 38.2 off of this range interesting how that's right there right eh? so you can literally see hogue's gonna be selling hogue's gonna be buying that's the bottom of value you can see how empty the profile is here so you know definitely we're coming back to here at some point and uh, the point of control is probably exactly that sort of uncle point of the market which is probably uh, probably right around the pivot of this massive uh, megaphone. So I don't know if that helps you dissynthetic, but there you go. All right, everybody, I'm going to leave the free broadcast at that for today. Um, did we ever, uh, did we get D, was it Dina or D -ni? Did we get her set up on the school program? Um, yeah. All right, cool. Awesome. So uh, welcome all level winners. Welcome raffle winner. I suppose uh, keep your eyes open for the end of the summer. We'll probably do another raffle. Uh, exceedingly pleased at the, uh, the amount of uh, uh, interest in TRI's uh, programs. Uh, I, you know, this shit works. The question ultimately is, are you going to believe it? Are you going to apply yourself? You want to you wanna be, a, uh, a, be a trader for a living? It's a profession. I mean, there are easier professions out there. This is less manual labor and more mental labor. But if you want to be a professional trader, but this is definitely a place uh, you've stumbled along the right place. And the great part about it is, uh, is um, we, the, it's gotten to the point where we're a community of traders. It's not just this nuts O'Brien guy just blabbing on forever. Uh, we have a community of robust people that all work together, and they have really good um, intentions. We all really want to help each other. Believe it or not, I know that sounds crazy, but it's true. So we'll give you the straight goods. I'm not going to tell you this is easy. I mean, it's tough. It's a tough profession. I think somebody said it's like, uh, how does it go? It's the easiest profession to make really hard money or something along those lines. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's not a bad way to, uh, to, uh, to um, uh, define it, Nick. I think we're in no man's land right now. Uh, and if I was the public, I would just say, you know, just let this range resolve itself. Once we're outside of this range, then we can start talking moon and we can start talking wrecked and all that kind of shit again. Right now, no man's land. That's actually a really great way to describe it. Uh, I know that VRC took off, Andrew. Oh, that was a great one, eh? Jesus Christ. Uh, how much time do you need for the level one? It's uh, Well, the program itself is 12 weeks. You know, how long does it take you to uh, digest and uh, apply the information? Well, that's entirely up to you. Um... I, you can't, you know, I, I, as, uh, as, um, Ro, uh, as, uh, how did it go? Ross Perot used to say, uh, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make it eat peanut butter, right? So, really, the cool part about it, like I said, is, uh, is, uh, this is, um, this is, this information works, right? We teach you the process. It's just really a question of, do you want to apply it? And for a lot of people in this business, they don't want to look in the mirror. They don't want to admit that they suck. <laughs> it's a brutal admission to actually have to look in the mirror and go, I suck, and I better do something to change my suckiness, 
or I'm going to continue sucking. That's a very hard conversation to have with yourself. So, you know, the answer there, uh, either is uh, really, uh, like I said, the, the program is 12 weeks. Uh, and every week is a totally unique um, concept and, you know, conversation. Put it all together, uh, definitely think you can build a nice, solid, small business of trading. And the application of uh, the material without making mistakes and really uh, keeping yourself in check, because keep in mind, you're the only person watching yourself, um, that's up to you. So. Okay, I think we'll leave the uh, video at that. Oh, by the way, probably should mention it. Um, you know, I really don't like the idea, but nonetheless, uh, if you're just like, holy shit, I got to get myself into that damn school. Um, this uh, special offer that uh, Julian and um, and uh, uh, David uh, put together, uh, their marketing campaign still has a couple days left on it. So uh, maybe check that out. And, you know, if nothing else, go and check out this page and just go watch the videos. I mean, this I think I've said this before, but to me, these two videos, if you just sit and watch these two videos, I think it tells you exactly why we do what we do at TRI and the people's lives that we change. We seriously do. So uh, I think these two videos, and I really like this page that David put together. I can use this now going forward to pitch TRI for the rest of my life. So thank you very much, David. I appreciate it. Okay, uh, I think we'll leave it at that. So have yourselves a great rest of your day. PMA for the win. All the best and bye for now.